Welcome to this video where we are going to talk about Spring Boot Auto Configuration. If you ask me what is one thing you have to learn mandatory about Spring Boot, then I would say Auto Configuration. That's basically what we would look at in this specific video. We'll look at why do you need Auto Configuration, what is Auto Configuration, and we'll look at a few examples of Spring Boot Auto Configuration, and we'll get a high level overview of how Auto Configuration is implemented in Spring Boot. Not just that, We'll also get an overview of how you can debug auto configuration. So that's a lot of things that we would discuss as part of this video. Auto configuration is one of the most beautiful things that Spring Boot brings in. If you are ready, let's get started. First of all, a small warning. I mean, this video expects you to be having good knowledge of Spring, Spring MVC, and uh, like things like Maven and little bit of unit testing as well. So if you are not an expert at them, there are links here which you can use to go and uh, learn more about those frameworks. Now, let's get started with Spring Boot Auto Configuration. Okay, basically, uh, we create a lot of courses. So at In 28 Minutes, one of the things which we do is we create courses on Spring, Spring MVC, and all the popular Java frameworks. So what we see is when we develop anything using Spring MVC, what happens is we would need to configure a lot of things. We need to configure component scan, we need to configure dispatcher servlet, a view resolver, uh, like if you want to deliver uh, web jars, like we want to deliver static content like bootstrap, jQuery, and things like that. There's a concept called web jars. If you want to web enable web jars, you need to do some configuration. So there's a lot of things that you would need to configure whenever you do any application with Spring MVC. Not just Spring MVC, but let's say I want to connect uh, uh, to a data source, so uh, Hibernate. So I would need to configure a data source, I would need to configure an entity manager, I would need to configure a transaction manager, and a lot of things around that. So you'd see, like you would pick up 15 different projects and you would see the code for those projects, you would see that this code is present in almost all the projects which are present, the configuration for dispatcher servlet, the configuration for web jars, configuration for view resolver, configuration for data source, and also entity manager and things like that. So that's one of the problems that is there with uh, typical uh, basic configuration that we keep repeating over and over again. The other kind of things that you would uh, see repeating is uh, the dependencies. So if I'm developing a web application, then what dependencies I need? It would be constant, right? I would probably, uh, typically I would need Spring MVC, then I would need some kind of binding framework, Jackson, for example. Um, then probably uh, I would need some kind of validator if I want to do server validate, uh, like server side validation. And I would need some kind of server to be able to run it. So this dependencies I need are kind of standard. So what Spring Boot did is it went on and it wanted to solve these two problems. So Spring Boot basically solves the problems that are there in getting started with applications uh, very fast. So in the world of microservices, we want to start developing applications very, very, very quickly. So that's where Spring Boot comes in. Spring Boot comes in with this thing called Spring Boot Startup Projects. We're not going to talk about Spring Boot Startup Projects in detail in this specific video. We are not going to talk a lot about Startup Projects in this specific video, uh, but you can look up our website for a lot of articles around Startup Projects. In this video, we'll sec look at the second problem that Spring Boot stalls, that's auto configuration. So all the configuration that uh, is typically needed at start of developing any application, that's what auto configuration tries to avoid. Auto configuration uh, says, okay, can we be more intelligent about this? When a Spring MVC jar is added into an application, I know they want to use a dispatcher servlet. Is there any other way of using a Spring MVC application? I mean, would somebody add in a, just to use a, some utility class which is present in there? No. When somebody adds in a Spring MVC jar, then he would want to configure dispatcher servlet for sure. So the questions it asks are, how about auto-configuring a data source if Hibernate jar is on the class path? How about auto-configuring a dispatcher servlet if Spring MVC jar is on the class path? So that's basically the thing which auto configuration does. So Spring Boot looks at whatever frameworks are available on the class part and also what configuration is provided by the programmer already. So if programmer already provided a data source, Spring Boot will not provide another data source. So Spring Boot looks at what frameworks are available in the class path, it looks at what is the existing configuration and it auto configures a lot of stuff. It provides basic configuration needed to configure applications. 
This is what is called auto configuration. So if you go ahead and bootstrap a simple web application, simple application with Spring Initializer, you'll be able to understand this much, much more. So what we would use is Spring Initializer. Start.spring.io is where Spring Initializer is. If you go to the website, it's a beautiful website and it allows you to create Spring Boot projects in a minute. So you can generate a Maven project, choose which Spring Boot version you want to use, specify group ID and artifact ID, and you can search for dependencies. So web, actuator, dev tools, you can specify whichever dependencies you would want and click generate project. So at least choose web, so that it, there's a little bit of web things in your stuff. And basically you enter com in 28 minutes, Spring Boot as group, you specify artifact ID, you choose your dependencies and click generate project. Once you click generate project, there would be a, a zip file which would be downloaded to your machine. Just unzip it, take, take it to a folder and you can import the project into Eclipse. So you can import the project into Eclipse by simple thing. All that you need to do is do a file, import ma existing Maven project and type in the folder name. So the path to the folder where you have that and you can click finish. That's basically you, what you need to do to import that project into Eclipse. So if you do that, you'd have a file called Spring Boot, uh, like student service application created. So one of the files you would see, which would be imported in when you do that. So it's a file called student services application. You can do a right click run as Java application on this to run this. That's it. That's all you need to be able to run an application with Spring Boot. When you do that, you will see that you'll see a few things in the log. You'd see dispatcher servlet, mapping dispatcher servlet to slash, mapping slash error to this, mapping slash webjar slash star star onto a specific handler. So these are all examples of Spring Boot auto configuration in action. So what Spring Boot auto configuration is doing is, as soon as it sees the Spring Web MVC jar on the class path, it configures a dispatcher servlet. It knows that you are trying to develop a web application. It, so it by default maps basic error handling onto your application. It also knows that you are developing a web application, so you might have static things. So it will also configure web jars by default. So basically what's happening is Spring Boot looks at all the things which are there in the class path and it auto configures the dispatcher servlet default error page and web jars. You'd see that if you like in the Spring Initializer website, you can add in JPA uh, now. So you can type in JPA or something in here. And then you would see that you would also like it would also configure a, a few more things. It would configure a data source, a entity manager and other stuff as well. So that's auto configuration. Auto configuration is basically the facility that Spring Boot provides of providing a basic configuration to configure your application. So whenever I want to start with an application quickly, I don't spend time configuring things which are done over and over again. I can focus on writing the real business logic. If that's the case, where is this implemented? So where is all the magic coming in from? So if you look at your Maven dependencies in your Eclipse, you would see something uh, called Spring Boot Auto Configure. Like depending on the version you are using, the version might be a little different, but the jar is Spring Boot Auto Configure. So if you go into the Spring Boot Auto Configure jar, all the stuff related to auto configuration for various things is present in here. So all the auto configuration logic for batch, all the auto configuration logic for data stuff. If you go further down, I mean, the screenshot is not covering everything, but if you go further down, there would be uh, auto configuration for web, that's MVC and all other stuff. All the auto configuration logic is present in one jar. So it's like this, Auto configuration is something which is common across different different things related to Spring Boot. So all auto configuration, whether it's a batch application, whether it's a web application, whether it's data related application, everything is in single jar. One another important file in Spring Boot auto configure.jar is in slash meta nf slash spring dot properties, which actually tells what are the auto configurations which are enabled. So if you look at the thing in the uh, specific in this particular auto configure jar, it would show things like this. It shows AOP auto configuration, method source auto configuration, JDBC auto configuration. You can see dispatcher servlet auto configuration, embedded servlet container auto configuration, error MVC auto configuration. All this stuff is inside a simple file called meta nf slash spring dot start factories. This is really the place where auto configuration starts from. So it looks for this property. It starts enabling all this uh, auto configuration. What it does is actually, so, 
we'll take one of the examples. So we'll look at something called data source auto configuration. So if you look at a data source auto configuration, at the top of it is an annotation called at conditional on class. So at conditional on class annotation basically says the data source auto configuration is available only if this class is available on the class path. So only if data source dot class is available on class path and embedded database type is available on the class path, configure a data source. If either of these is not available, then it will not configure data source auto configuration. So that's basically what is, uh, uh, that is how uh, Spring Boot defines the conditions. So conditional on class. The other one is conditional on missing bean. So you'd see, for example, data source initializer. So this bean is created only if there is no other bean with the same name. So if there is no other bean with data source initializer as the name, only then this would be initialized. Otherwise, this will not be initialized. So similar to that, embedded database configuration, you can see conditional. So it's conditional on the fact that there is something called embedded data condi database condition in the class path. So only if this class is on the class path, then this configuration is enabled. So are there any additional conditions? Yes, it's also conditional on missing bean. So there should not be any data source or XA data source. So only if there is no data source configured, then configure an embedded database. If there's a data source already configured, don't configure an embedded data source. And also there is a lot of magic which is happening in the background with auto configuration, right? These are, there are a lot of conditions which are present in here, like data source configuration is enabled in certain situations, not enabled in certain situations. I'm having a problem with it. So let's say I'm facing a problem with auto configuration. So there is something which I'm expecting that should happen, but I don't see it happening. Or there is something which I don't expect should happen, but it's happening. So how do I debug auto configuration? That's what we would look at next. So there are two ways you can actually debug and find more information about auto configuration. First one is to turn on debug logging. So if you put logging.level.org spring framework debug, then you are turning on the debug logging. So you just need to go to application.properties, put this in. So you're turning on debug logging. And if you turn debug logging, then there would be an auto configuration report which would be printed in the log. So in the auto configuration report, it would print all the positive matches. For example, dispatcher or servlet auto configuration is matched because it found a class called this and it also found a standard servlet environment. So these are the two conditions which needs to be satisfied. Those are satisfied. So I'm configuring a dispatcher servlet. It says active MQ auto configuration did not match. That's negative match. So it uh, did not match. It needed a class called connection factory, but I don't find the connection factory on the class part. So I'm not configuring a auto active MQ. AOP auto configuration did not match. It needed this particular AOP properties, but it did not find them. So it's not configuring them. So that's uh, at startup. So this is one way you can debug stuff. You can look at the auto configuration report. You can search for whichever auto configuration thing that you are looking for and you'd be able to find why it's loaded or why it's not loaded. The other way is to load up something called Spring Boot Actuator. So if you add in Spring Boot Actuator and Spring Boot REST HAL browser to your application, these dependencies to your application, then they bring in a lot of functionality. So if you add this in, and by default, this is the URL, localhost 8080 slash actuator. If you go there in the auto configuration URL, so if you go to the auto configuration URL, you'd see that there's a report which is present in there as well. So you'd see something of this kind, negative matches. This one, this is the condition. It did not find something, so it's not configured. So you'd find all the negative matches and the positive matches also printed in there. So that's basically how you debug auto configuration. What did we do in this specific video? We started with looking at why we need auto configuration. We discussed what is auto configuration. We looked at a few examples of auto configuration and we looked at how it's implemented in Spring Boot and we ended this by looking at how to debug auto configuration. Wow, that's a lot of things that we discussed in this short video. At In 28 Minutes, our focus is on making you an expert at Spring Boot. We have created a complete website on Spring Boot at www.springbootshutorial.com. The link in the description of video would take you to a page where you find details of all the courses, videos, and the articles we have created on Spring Boot. If you love our videos, you'd love our courses too. Our courses have great reviews 
on Udemy. You can see some of the reviews in here. And there are also articles on basics of Spring Boot, auto configuration, startup projects, startup parent, less services, web application, all the code examples. We have Maven projects which are present, which you can directly import into Eclipse and start running them and other references as well. This page would be a great start for you to become an expert on Spring Boot. You might also want to visit our website www.in28minutes.com all other courses other than Spring Boot as well. Thank you for all the support you are providing us. We would not have grown to 52,000 on Udemy. We would not have such great reviews on courses on Udemy without your support. We would not have been able to grow to 28,000 subscribers and more than 3 million views without your support. We want you to learn and make best uses of all the courses that we have. Good luck and I will see you in the next video or the course. Until next time, here's Ranga from In28Minutes signing off.